Jessica Horn, and you are watching Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I am Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. I'm live on Instagram. What's up, Instagram? I'm live on Facebook. This is episode 206 of Actors Daily Bread. So if you've missed any episodes, this is the perfect time of the year to binge your heart away. Uh, the subject for tonight, or to, for this afternoon, I'm um, coming to you live from my mother-in-law's house, having a lovely time here for um, holiday. But the, the subject of today's live is to wig or not to wig. That is the question. So, you know, this will not apply to most of you, but this was a popular topic that came up in our Hollywood Bound Actress Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, come on and join us. Also, really quick before I dive into today's question that came in, um, I am hosting my first free workshop of the year, um, Learn the Three-Part Rinse and Repeat Process to Book More TV in honor of my new course, Book More TV, which is launching January 1st. I'm hosting three workshops in honor of that. The link, Instagram, is in my bio. The link Facebook is above or below. Come on and sign up. We're going to spend an hour together. I'm going to be live, but there's only three days you can take it, and I'm not offering replays. They won't be recording, so you got to be there, and there's three times you can take it, January 1st, January 2nd, or 4th. So let's dive in. Um, hey, Annie Mel. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Janine. Hey, Marilee. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, let me dive in. So I'm going to go to this other tab and read the question that came in. So... Um, this question was from Sean Wilson. Shout out to Sean Wilson in our Hollywood Band Actors Facebook group. She had a question, so it's kind of long, so I'm going to read it all so you have context. And I wasn't going to go live, but I, I was like, so many people started commenting on it. I was like, well, I don't feel like typing that answer. Let me just go live. <laughs> so she says, she asks, on your Actors Access profile, you have essentially the same look in every headshot. My Actors Access profile is the same. However, I notice from your demo clips that when you actually work a job, you often have a different hairstyle altogether, even different lengths and textures, right? So her question is, when you audition for those jobs, are you going in and or self-taping with the look that matches the headshot? Oh, such a juicy question. That matches the headshot you were called in from? Or are you choosing from your collection of wigs, because if y'all don't know, I love wigs, like, um, that actually fits the character better? Um, just hang tight, I'm gonna answer this. She also says, what I've been doing is holding to traditional wisdom of make sure you look just like your headshot. Can y'all relate? Put I can relate in the comments. I know this isn't for everybody, <laughs> my wig wearers. Um, put, I can relate in the comments. So I know that you, we've been drilled and trained when we were, in, in acting school or with our, you know, our team or as we came up that we need to look just like our headshots. Um, she says, but sometimes even though I've been called in from a headshot with a shoulder length hairstyle, one of my shorter wigs would actually fit that character better. Side note, I do realize that some of your demo clips may be from past periods when you actually had those looks displayed on your profile. Or it's even possible that the stylist on set made a different choice for that hair. Still, I'd love to know, when you audition, what do you do? So thank you, Sean Wilson. And um, I, I felt pressure today, honey. I said I was going to go live, and people was like, well, when? What time? When are you doing it? And I was like, that is true, because everybody's trying to go about their life. So let me answer the question. Yes, back in the day, I used to follow that rule of look just like your headshot. Um, and what I found as I got more seasoned in the craft was that that just doesn't always work out. And for me, I truly am trying to create the character um, from the beginning. And for me, that starts in the choice that I make when I audition. Because honestly, at the end of the day, no one's going to be like, she was so great, oh, but her hair um, just ruined it for me. You know, I found that there were some roles where Yes, the hair that that was in the headshot that they picked, I really felt fit the character. Um, but if you have something that's very, um, what's the word, striking. So for instance, if you were bald headed, right? And they call you in for this woman who's in a cancer ward or something like that, there's a good chance, there's a good possibility they may be like, oh yeah, this, this would be a perfect fit for this character that's going through chemo, right? And so if you show up with a long head of, um, uh, you know, a, a lace front, 
they're going to be like, well, what? I can see how that could throw, throw you. But for me, like for instance, I shared a post today about when I played that role on Good Girls. Um, I just made a choice. They wanted the character to kind of res give a vibe of Niecy Nash. And my typically work in my short wig and my natural hair, I, ne I rarely work in. So I just made a decision. So yes, Sean, to answer part one of the question is, I do go through my stash and see what I think fits the, fits the vibe of the character. And listen, this isn't just for black women. You know, some of my white sisters, my Latina sisters, like whoever's out there, like you may want to change your look up because let's be real, people are wearing clip-ins and extensions all day long. When I do TV shows, I, you know, when I did Mom, you know, when I worked with Allison Janney, honey, she got, she's not do, getting her hair done every day on that set. She's wearing a, a fall. So just for the sake of saving your hair. But I don't stress myself out with, I got to look exactly like my headshot. Honestly, sometimes a lot of the people in the casting process don't even know that you're wearing a wig. They don't even understand the whole world of it. <laughs> They're like, oh, you cut your hair. Oh, you curled your hair. Oh, you dyed your hair. <laughs> just like, no. So I don't feel like that's even necessary. Um, so sometimes it really is based on what my hair is doing at the time. When I booked SWAT, I happened to have a weave in and I felt like she fit this, the hair I had fit the character. I made it a little messy, like she wasn't all, all the way put together. So it really is, I know at the end of the day, make a decision and no one's going to you know, send you home or say your tape was bad or your audition was bad just because you decided to do something different with your hair. We honestly, sis, <laughs> we put more thought about this than they do, than casting does. Now, yes, when you get to set, you get to still create what this woman or looks like, what this character looks like. But us, unless I'm just going to keep it all the way 100, us in our community, especially African-American women, we're the ones dissecting. Oh, that's a lace front. That's crochet. Oh, that's this, this. Like, it's understanding, too, how Hollywood sees you as well. And this is stuff I'll be talking about in my Book More TV course in January. But you have to understand what different hairstyles represent in Hollywood, right? It's just going to be taken differently. Even for my white sisters, you know, red hair equates to the girl next, not the girl next, it equates to, equates to the sidekick, the secretary, right? Blonde equals beautiful. Now, this is not saying I agree with this. Let's be clear. I just understand the eye of what people are thinking when they're casting. And just in the world, blonde is beautiful, which is why so many of my white sisters, y'all, you know, will dye your hair, bleach it or bleach it, however you say it, blonde, because like, I want to be taken more seriously as a beautiful leading lady, an ingenue versus when my when you do your hair dark brunette right then you're the badass then you're like super serious we take you seriously now and so the same thing is with us you know curly hair equates to you know it's been changing but typically in the past curly hair was you know this again the sister the friend the sidekick but now the, the, the landscape is changing we got sisters like Simone Missick and so many more beautiful women on television with big curly hair and we, they can still be taken seriously so at the end of the day when you make a choice and it helps you create the character and you stand in that and you're confident in that <laughs> the rest will be done on set there's also been times where I showed up to a casting with I remember that when I booked the series regular for ABC, I came with short curly hair and that's how I was booked. But then when it came time to actually go into production, they realized another character on set, the lead, the number one on the call, she had curly hair. They didn't want two curly hair people. So then it became this whole production about what hair I was gonna have. So I'm saying at the end of the day, there's times where you show up with your ideas, but then the production and the network will have their own ideas too. So all of that to say, don't overthink it. Do what feels natural to you. Do what you feel will sit and resonate in for that character for you. And I have no problem, you know, helping to create. The creation starts with you. This is the, the ideas that you get to bring to the table from the very beginning. So Sean, I hope that answers your question. If you're still on live, um, leave a comment. I don't see you commenting. Um, but, um, I hope that answers your question and, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If, um, something else comes up for you, I hope you all again are enjoying your holiday time. Again, be sure to click the link in my bio to join me for one of my workshops, January 1st, 2nd or 4th only. 
Do not miss it because Book More TV is coming and you're going to want to be in it. Why is my husband on my live? And he's sitting right over here. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Again, if you missed any of these videos, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and binge. Bye. Love you all.